ברכת ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. The patriarch that had a very difficult job position was really Isaac, Yitzchak, the one in the middle. He was like a middle son. He wasn't the oldest and he wasn't the youngest. The oldest gets maybe more respect, the youngest gets more love. He was in the middle. Well, he wasn't Abraham. He wasn't an iconoclast who destroyed idols and taught the world about monotheism. Neither was he Jacob. Yaakov, the father of the 12 tribes that engendered the Jewish people, he was in between. One can argue that without Isaac, without Yitzchak, there is no Yaakov. There would be no father of the tribes. Okay, but what did he do? Well, he was a very special human being. For instance, Abraham was born in Ur, outside of the land of Israel. He went to Israel, lived in Israel the latter part of his life, and died in Israel. Jacob, Yaakov, was born in Israel, but he didn't live in Israel all the time. At a certain point in his life, he went down to Egypt, and that's where he died. He was buried afterwards, but he didn't live all his life in Israel, including Abraham, while he was in Israel. And there was no bread, there was hunger in the land. He went to Egypt, because there there was bread, and he came back to Israel once the situation improved. In the time of Isaac, of Yitzchak, there was also a problem with bread at a certain time. And God told him, don't leave the land of Israel, because Isaac, Yitzchak, was somehow holy. He almost gave his life for God. He was willing to be offered as a sacrifice. At the end, it didn't happen, but yet he was willing to do it. He lived his entire life in the land of Israel. He was an ethereal type of person. He walked on this earth, but maybe his mind really was elsewhere. What did he do? What physical accomplishment did he do? Well, we don't know much about his life, really. The Torah says that he opened up some wells, but actually these wells had been opened up by his father already, but the Philistines had stopped them up. So what he did is, once again, reopened the wells that is father had opened at one time. But the Torah mentions three wells. One of them is called Esek. Esek, which means there's a problem there. One is called Sitna, which is animosity. And finally, one is called Rehovot, which means amplitude. Why the difference between these wells? It seems there was always fight, um, a fight between his own people and the people in the place, except for the third well. Then there was no fight. So Ramban, I think, it's, was the person who explained it, and he says the following. You know why there was a problem with the first one? Because the people of Isaac and the people of the locality really didn't get along. There was conflict between them, and the well just represented that. And the same thing for the second well. But the third well was different, because Isaac himself, the Torah said, Vayachpor, he dug the well. Isaac himself did it. This time there was no conflict between anybody. And Ramban says, you know why these wells are mentioned? Because they are somehow prophetic, significant of the three temples of Jerusalem. The first one was built by King Solomon. And we know that temple was destroyed. Why was it destroyed? Because there was idol worship in the temple also. It wasn't pure monotheism at that time. The king Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple. The Babylonian Assyrians, they are the ones that destroyed the temple in the year 586 or something like that before the Common Era. The second temple was rebuilt after they came back from exile in Babylonia. And eventually King Herod made it very beautiful. But once again, it was destroyed by the Romans in the year 70 of the Common Era. Why was the second Beit HaMikdash destroyed? Our rabbis say because of animosity among the people. You know, there was hate among the people. Sinat chinam, they, they call it. Gratuitous hate for no reason at all. And that's why the temple was destroyed. Interesting, our rabbis never underline that the conqueror is the one that really destroyed the temple. They always feel it's because of our own shortcomings that these temples were destroyed. If we had been better, this wouldn't have happened. So what is the third Beit HaMikdash? That's when 
Just like Isaac dug a well and he felt the responsibility on himself, not on somebody else, when each and every one of us will feel responsible for the house of God, then the third Beit HaMikdash will be rebuilt. Our rabbis say, if in your generation the Beit HaMikdash is not rebuilt, it's as if you had destroyed it because you haven't done anything for there to be a different environment that would permit the reconstruction of the Beit HaMikdash. So I think this is a very important uh, lesson for each and every one of us, not to look for outside causes for problems that we have, differences that we have. Remember, it is always you. It's your doing, your honesty. It is your integrity that is really responsible for the direction you are taking in life. And maybe if we all somehow start leading a more moral and ethical life, the third Beit HaMikdash will be rebuilt in our own lives, and we will see the third temple in Jerusalem.